Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one husky. Gold, gold discovered in a Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Say, do you know what's the world's fastest dog? What's the most popular recognized breed of dog? And do you know that there's a kind of dog that weighs as little as one pound? Why, you can hold him right in your hand. Do you know his name? Well, sir, start collecting official Challenge of the Yukon dog picture cards today. You'll learn all about these dogs and many more. You'll have authentic color photographs of real dogs. And you'll have them on trading cards. Picture cards with the same shiny, glossy finish as game cards. These Challenge of the Yukon dog cards are made specially for you. They're yours, 35 of them, at no extra cost. We'll tell you how to get them in just a few minutes. When little Sherry O'Rourke arrived in Whitehorse from the States, Sergeant Preston found himself confronted with a difficult problem. Sherry's father was dead, and her mother, ill and penniless in the charity ward of a Seattle hospital, had sent the little girl north to the Yukon to live with her grandfather, old Amos Benbow. Amos was a notorious hermit who owned a small mining claim about 20 miles east of Whitehorse. And Sergeant Preston doubted very much that the crotchety old man would welcome the job of caring for his small granddaughter. The sergeant's misgivings proved well-founded. I tell you, I won't have the brat around here. Amos, you can't turn the child away. After all, she is your granddaughter. She's no relative of mine. I disowned a mother when she ran off with that no-good Irishman, Tom O'Rourke. Her mother's very ill, Amos. She's in the charity ward of a Seattle hospital. Yeah, don't try playing on my sympathy, Sergeant. As far as I'm concerned, you can take the brat right back to Whitehorse. Sorry, but that's impossible. Two men robbed the bank over in Pine Ridge, and King and I are on our way to pick up their trail. Bank robbers? <laughs> Preston, I think you're just making excuses. Do you? Sherry, I'm sorry you're getting such a cold welcome, dear. That's all right, Sergeant. Mother told me he always gets grouchy when he eats what? too much. <laughs> eats too much? <laughs> Listen to me, young lady. If you're going to stay here with me, you'll have to mend your manners. Then you will keep her? Yeah. Just till you get back. Then out she goes. Gee, I wish King could stay here with me. Well, I wish he could too, dear, but I need him to trail those bank robbers. You'll have your grandfather's dog to play with. My dog doesn't play with kids. As a matter of fact, Spud hates children. Especially female children. Oh, he doesn't seem to hate Sherry. Oh, I like Spud, too. Even though he isn't big and handsome like King. Well, I think King and I had better be on our way. Come on, boy. Now, remember, Amos, take good care of Sherry. If I come back and find she's been mistreated in any way, I'll hold you responsible. The next day, old Amos Benbow showed alarming signs of coming down with a bad cold. <laughs> Oh, Grampy, you'd better go to bed and let me fix you some nice hot broth. Oh, stop hovering over me. <coughs> well, uh, I guess you're right, Grandpa. Right about what? Well, it, it's better for you to keep up and around instead of going to bed. <laughs> that settles it. I'll go to bed right now. A short time later, when the old man was comfortably settled in his bunk, Sherry brought him a steaming cup of broth. You now, drink it, Grandpa. It'll do you good. <laughs> I suppose it can't kill me. That's not bad. I can make much better myself, but it's not bad. Someone's at the door. I'll go see who it is. As she opened the door, Sherry saw two tough-looking men standing outside. One was carrying a large bag. Hello. Who are you? What? Kid. Kid. 
I thought you said the old coot lived by himself. He always used to. We're coming in, little girl. Get out of my way, Mutt. Who is it, Sherry? You got visitors, Amos. Come on, Missy's in the bedroom. I'm going to see him. All right. Yeah. So you're flat on your back, huh, Amos? Drucker. That's right. And this is my partner, Loomis. Uh, what do you two want? <laughs> we thought you might be lonesome. So we decided to stay with you for a few days. And we didn't know you'd adopted a kid. I haven't adopted her. She's my granddaughter. Ah, tough luck, girlie. Do you know these men, Grandpa? Well, I know Drucker. He's a no-good polecat that never did an honest day's work in his life. The other's probably just as bad. Now, is that any way to talk about guests? Guests? If you two think you're going to stay here under my roof, you got another thing coming. Get out! Both of you! <laughs> Which one of you is going to put us out, Amos? You or the kid? Why, you... <laughs> Grandpa, I'll bet I know who these men are. What do you mean? They must be those two bank robbers Sergeant Preston told us about. Why? And I'll bet they've got the money they stole right in that bag. How did you know that? Can't you take your oh. hands off of that child of my Let her alone, Loomis. You're a smart kid, Billy. What's your name? Sherry O'Rourke. Well, Sherry, you're right. We did rob a bank. We're going to stay here with you and your granddad for the next couple of days until the hue and cry dies down. Maybe someone will come here to visit Grandpa, and, and that's then you... one thing we're sure ain't going to happen. Amos never has any visitors because he hates everybody, and everybody hates him. Ain't that right, Amos? Hey, you worthless skunk. I'm cool gonna... off and stay where you are, Grandpa. And I'll blast your false teeth right down your throat. For your information, this six-shooter is loaded with real bullets. So don't try any funny stuff, either of you. <coughs> All right, kid, put that mud outdoors and then show us where you keep the grub around here. I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. That night, the old man's coughing grew more violent than ever, and by morning he was running a high fever. All day long, Sherry nursed her grandfather devotedly, leaving his side only long enough to prepare their meals. When evening came, the old man fell into a deep doze. As the little girl watched quietly at his bedside, she heard the two crooks talking in the next room. A short time later, Sherry walked into the main room of the cabin where the two crooks were playing cards and began putting on her coat and hat. Where do you think you're going, Kelly? Well, I'm going out to feed the dog. He hasn't had anything to eat since this morning. All right, go ahead. The little girl took some dried caribou meat from the shelf and then went outside the cabin. Here's Bud. Come here, Jackie. And if he doesn't get a doctor, he may die. Now, you eat this quick, and then you and I are going to sneak away and get help. <laughs> More than half an hour went by before the crooks became suspicious. Finally, Drucker went outside to investigate. A few moments later, he returned. The kid's gone. <laughs> gone. What do you mean? Just what I say. She and the dog have beat it. What's going on? Uh, Where's the child? Sounds like the old man's waked up. The kid's run away, Amos. Run away? But it's dark out. Don't look at me. I can't help it. She probably got a bee in her bonnet that she was going to go get a doctor for you. The child just arrived two days ago. Yeah, and we just arrived yesterday. So what? Uh, she doesn't know a way around. She'll get lost. That ain't all. There's a blizzard blowing up outside. Shut up, Loomis. <laughs> We've got to find her and bring her back. Stay right where you are, Grandpa. You ain't going nowhere. Uh, you heartless polecat. <laughs> The child will freeze to death. You should have told her that. Maybe we better let the old guy go after if he wants to. Nothing doing. You might hightail it to the nearest cabin and spill the beans. Well, then, uh, what about one of us going after? Go ahead if you want to. But it'll be like looking for a needle in a haystack. The way that snow's coming down, you won't be able to see a foot in front of your face. Yeah, that's so. 
And there's wolves around here, too. Ain't there? Yeah, doggone and right there is. Now, come on, sit down and stop yapping. Kid's lucky she may find a cave or something to hold up in. Yeah, but what if she don't? That'll be tough luck for her. There ain't nothing we can do about it. Yeah. I guess you're right. The two crooks returned to their card game. A short time later, they turned down the oil lamp and stretched out their blankets on the floor of the cabin. Amos waited until their heavy breathing told him they were asleep. Then the sick old man climbed painfully out of bed, pulled on his parka, and quietly took a lantern down from the wall. I have to light it outside under the lean to Pray heaven I can get out without waking those crooks. As Amos opened the door of the cabin, one of the crooks stirred restlessly in his sleep. Amos held his breath, but the crook did not awaken. With a sigh of relief, the old man stepped out into the night and closed the door softly behind him. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Fellows, girls, listen. Listen to this. In each package of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, you now get two official Challenge of the Yukon dog picture cards. There are different cards in each package. That's right. This is a special offer. Not one, but two dog picture cards are yours at no extra cost. Right at your grocer's. No waiting. These cards are the real McCoy trading cards. Stiff back with the same shiny, glossy finish as game cards. And you get two of these cards inside each package at no extra cost. In all, there are 35 different cards. Each a beautiful, true-to-life photograph in color of a famous breed of dog. Photographs are all new, and you can get them only with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Popular dogs you know, like Cocker Spaniel, Great Dane, or Collie. And you get breeds originating in far-off foreign lands, like among the Arabs or Chinese. You'll find a powerful underwater or swimming dog with webbed feet that hunts the fighting otter. What's more, every one of the 35 dogs on these cards is a real dog. Like, for instance, champion Charles River Color Sergeant, the Irish setter voted best in show at the recent ninth Annual International Kennel Club Dog Show in Chicago. And think of it. You get a picture card of King. That's right. King, the greatest husky in the North Country. It's authentic, exciting, and in full color. On the back of each one of these 35 different dog picture cards, you'll find a description of each dog. Sergeant Preston tells you what the dog is like, plus many interesting facts you should know about him. Whether he's a working dog like Shetland Sheepdog, or a sporting dog like Foxhound, or whether the dog learns tricks easily, or is a good watchdog. Man, oh man, can you wait to start collecting these wonderful trading cards? Hurry, be first. Here's all you do. Buy Quaker Puff wheat or Quaker Puff rice at your grocer's. Don't wait a single day. You'll find not one, but two of these dog picture cards Inside each package, they're yours at no extra cost. There's no waiting, nothing to send in, no money, box tops, or coupons. Act fast. These official Challenge of the Yukon dog picture cards come only with delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. And you get not one, but two different cards in each package. Save them, swap them, trade them. Don't delay. Be first to start collecting today. Now to continue our story. When Drucker and Loomis refused to let old Amos Benbow go after his little granddaughter and save her from the blizzard, the old man waited until the two crooks were asleep. Then he took down a lantern from the wall and slipped away into the darkness. Half an hour passed, and as the wind grew steadily stronger, buffeting the walls of the cabin, Drucker awakened. wind how? For a moment, Drucker wondered about the fate of the little girl who had wandered off into the blizzard. And then he was struck by a sudden suspicion. Maybe I better go take a look at the old man. Getting up out of his blankets, Drucker lit the oil lamp and went into the bedroom. What the... Hey, Loomis! Wake up! Uh, 
Inspector. What's up? The old man's gone. Gone? Where to? How do I know where to? Wake up and talk sense. Oh. What are you getting so excited about? He probably went looking for the kid. Maybe he did. And maybe he didn't. What, what do you mean by that? For all we know, there may be other cabins around here. Amos may have gone to one of them to get help. There ain't another cabin in sight. Oh. Besides, the old guy's so sick he won't last five minutes in this weather. Amos is a tough old buzzard. If there's a cabin anywhere around here, he'll get to it. You and me better clear out while we get the chance. Miss Blizzard, are you crazy? A while ago, you were telling me to stop worrying. That now was you're... different. I told you to stop worrying about the old man and the kid. This time, it's our own necks that are in danger. Listen, Drucker, I'm not budging out of this cabin before morning. Maybe you got the right idea at that. Hey, what's a gun for? Put up your hands and don't try any tricks while I'm taking your gun. Now then, Loomis, if you want to stay here and be caught, that suits me fine. That means I'll keep all that bank money myself instead of splitting it with you. <laughs> Meanwhile, Amos Benbow was searching desperately for his little granddaughter. When he first left the cabin, the snow had not yet completely filled in Sherry's tracks. And he was able to follow them for some distance by the light of his lantern. But as the blizzard grew steadily worse, all trace of the little girl's footprints disappeared. Still, the old man refused to give up hope. Weak and burning up with fever despite the bitter cold, he continued to fight his way painfully forward against the gale. Sherry! Sherry! Where are you? Sherry! Suddenly, above the wind, Amos heard a faint barking. There must be Spud! It is Spud! Oh, Spud boy, where is she? Take me to her, Spud. A moment later, the old man caught sight of a small, shivering figure. Grandpa, it's you. It's you. Jerry, my little girl. Thank heavens you're safe. You're safe. As the old man pressed forward to take the little girl in his arms, he tottered weakly. I, I, oh. Spud, Grandpa's fallen down in the snow. Grandpa, wake up. Wake up. He's not moving. What are we going to do? When Sergeant Preston and his great dog, King, arrived in Pine Ridge, the trail of the bank robbers was already many hours old. But King managed eventually to pick up their scent on the outskirts of town. Sergeant Preston was surprised to find that the trail pointed toward Whitehorse, the direction from which he had just come. So they're heading for Whitehorse, eh, fellow? Funny we didn't pass him on our way up here. He must have avoided the main trail. Well, we've got a head start on us, but we'll catch them. All right. Hun King! Hun Nightfall found the Mountie at a point several miles east of Amos Benbow's cabin. In view of the blizzard that was blowing up, he decided to push on through the darkness and seek shelter with the old hermit. An hour later, the sergeant was knocking at the door of the old man's cabin. Third time I've knocked. I wonder if they've gone to town. Maybe we better go inside, King. As Sergeant Preston opened the door, King caught the scent that he had temporarily lost in the blizzard. The scent of the two bank robbers. What's wrong, fella? Someone in there that shouldn't be? All right, boy, I've got my gun ready. Better come out, whoever's in there. This is Sergeant Sergeant Preston. Very well, I'll come in and get you. King knew that danger lurked behind the open door. And as the sergeant stepped into the cabin, the great dog sprang forward to guard his beloved master. Help! Help! Hiding help! behind the door, eh? Help! Get that dog off of me! All right, boy. He doesn't seem to have a gun. On guard. Get him away! He won't hurt you if you don't move. Just lie still while I light this lamp. That's better. Now let's have a look at you. Oh, Bert Loomis, eh? Where's your partner? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. You and Drucker were recognized when you robbed the bank at Pine Ridge. All right. I guess it jigs up. On your feet, Lewis, and start uh, talking. Uh, Drucker took all the money and cleared out. What about Amos Benbow and the little girl? The old man was plenty sick, so the kid sneaked off after dark to get a doctor. Huh? Drucker wouldn't let the old guy go after her, but he finally sneaked away after me and Drucker went to sleep. You mean Amos and the little girl are out somewhere in this blizzard? It ain't my fault. I wanted to do something, but Drucker wouldn't let me. Why did Drucker leave? He was afraid the old man might reach some other cabin and get help. There's no one living within miles of here. Turn around, Lewis. What, what are you going to do? I'm going to put these handcuffs on you. There. I guess you won't be foolish enough to venture out in a blizzard with your wrists handcuffed behind your back. Sergeant Preston found a shirt belonging to Amos and one of Sherry's dresses and held them out to King. These are the sense, boy. Now, I know it won't be easy to trail them in this blizzard, King, but we'll have to try. 
The Mountie and his great dog began their search by casting about in wide circles outside the cabin. King had sensed the urgency in Sergeant Preston's voice, and he was fearful that he might fail his master in this moment of need. Straining his delicate nostrils to the utmost, he finally caught a trace of old Amos Benbow's scent close to the ground. Got the scent, King? Good boy. And lead the way. All right! On your Meanwhile, Sherry O'Rourke huddled beside the unconscious form of her grandfather, hugging the little dog Spud close to her for warmth. A dense thicket of underbrush provided a slight windbreak against the howling gale, but the little girl's body shivered convulsively, and her lips were blue with cold. Oh, Spud, it's so cold. He phoned Grandpa's lantern head and gone out when he fell down in the snow. Oh, how will anyone ever find us here in the dark? Around here. Spud, I'm scared. I'm scared. I, I guess I better start praying again. <gasps> what was that? <laughs> don't bark, Spud. It might be the wolves coming closer. Spud, where are you going? Come back. Come back. Come back. A moment later, the little girl screamed at the sight of a gray wolf like beast sprinting toward her through the swirling snow, with Spud running excitedly at its side. <laughs> Not a wolf at all. It's King. Oh, King. King, you've come to save us. Oh. Hold on. Hold on. Sherry, you all right? Sergeant Preston. Yes, I'm all right. Something's happened to grab. Well, first, let me get this blanket around you and carry you back to the sled. There you are, my dear. Now, you stay here for a minute and try to get warm while I'll see about your grandfather. Stay with the King. Very good dog, Spud. Your barking helped King find you. The sergeant went back to the old man and examined him for signs of life. Be weak, but the pulse is still there. Some of this brandy will help. Where am I? Never mind talking, Amos. Just drink some more of this. Now, what about Sherry? Is she safe? She's all right, Amos. She's on my sled. Now, let's carry you over, too. Even as the sergeant lifted Amos up in his arms, the old man lapsed again into unconsciousness. Is Grandpa all right, sergeant? He's pretty weak, but we can pull him through, Sherry. Now, suppose you get up and let me lay him down on the sled. I'll carry you in my arms. There we are. Now then, up you go. One king! One! When Sergeant Preston arrived in sight of Amos Benbow's cabin, he noticed that the windows were dark. He was somewhat surprised but assumed that the oil lamp had burned down and gone out. A short time later, he pulled his team to a halt in front of the cabin. Okay. Hey, Come on. Gee, it would be good to be inside again. Don't worry, Sherry. We'll soon have you nice and warm. As the sergeant left his sled and walked toward the cabin, a shot rang out from the window. <laughs> a shot creased the sergeant's scalp. Instinctively, the Mountie flung himself to the ground, thrusting the little girl to one side as he fell, so as to shield her with his own body. Same instant, King charged straight toward the cabin and hurled himself against the door. The sergeant knew that whoever fired the shot would be forced to turn and cope with King's attack. Whipping out his revolver, he fired at the cabin window. A cry of pain told him that his bullet had found its mark, and a split second later, he heard King engage the hidden gunman. Stay where you are, Sherry. I'm going into that cabin. Up your gun. Get on the floor. Please pull up the door. Your shot busted my shoulder. First, I want your gun. Right over here. No big sake, hurry. All right, King. One guard, boy. Hold him there while I light this lamp. A moment later, the flaring rays of the oil lamp disclosed the gunman's identity. Bucker, eh? I thought as much. What's the matter? Couldn't you stand the blizzard? If I hadn't come back, I would have froze to death in that weather. You didn't hesitate to let a little girl meet the same fate. No. Proper punishment for you, Drucker, would be to put you outside and leave you there all night. Where's Loomis? He's over there on the floor. You knocked him unconscious, eh? I had to. He might have yelled and warned you. What are you going to do? I'm going to take these cuffs off Loomis and put them on you. Sergeant Preston handcuffed Drucker and then brought Sherry O'Rourke and her grandfather into the cabin. After arranging them comfortably near the stove and fixing them some hot tea, he tied both the bank robbers securely with rawhide thongs. Then the sergeant said, Sherry, I've got to go into Whitehorse and bring back a doctor. 
Can you be brave for a while and stay here with your grandfather and these two crooks if I leave King to guard you? Oh, of course I can. I'm not afraid of anything as long as King is guarding me. <laughs> Sergeant, do you think the doctor will be able to make Grandpa well again? I'm not sure, dear. We'll just have to hope and pray. It was a week later. The doctor, whom Sergeant Preston had brought from Whitehorse, had somehow managed to keep the spark of life burning in Amos Benbow's body. Now the worst was over. And as Sergeant Preston visited at Amos's bedside, with little Sherry O'Rourke hovering beside him, it was evident that the old man was gradually regaining his strength. You've had a pretty close call, Amos. I never would have pulled through if it hadn't been for little Sherry here. She seems to be a natural nurse. Uh, she did more than nurse me, Sergeant. She gave me a reason to get well. I'm glad of that, Amos. You know, for the first time since I've known you, you look like a happy man. Well, this little girl made me see what a selfish old fool I've been. I take it you've forgiven her mother. I'm the one who needed forgiveness. I've sent money down to Seattle and asked Sally to come up and live with us as soon as she gets out of the hospital. Oh? Looks to me as though you're all going to be very happy. Well, you must forgive me, Sergeant. I've never thanked you for all you've done. This king who deserves your thanks, Amos. If he had managed to pick up your trail, you and Sherry might both have perished in that blizzard. <laughs> oh, he's a wonderful dog. He's the most wonderful dog in the whole world. And so is Spud. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Amos, with you and Sherry safe and well, and those two bank robbers behind bars, this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. Got a pencil handy? Then write this down now. Write down Quaker puffed wheat... And Quaker Puffed Rice. If you haven't a pencil, remember the name Quaker Puffed Wheat, Quaker Puffed Rice. There's a surprise, a dream prize, now inside each new package of the breakfast cereal shot from gun. With each package you buy, you'll get not one, but two official challenge of the Yukon Dog Picture Cards. There are 35 different beautiful cards in all. A set of 35 famous breeds of dogs. They're new, different, nothing just like them. Yes, these stiff-back trading cards feature photographs in color of real dogs. And you get King himself. <laughs> Imagine owning a collection of these official dog picture cards. And they're yours at no extra cost inside each package of wheat or rice shot from gun. Two cards are in each package. Simply buy Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. Get both delicious kinds. That way you'll get four cards right off. And say, why not start a swapping club tomorrow with your pals? You'll want to save, trade, collect these dog picture cards. That's for sure. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. The breakfast cereals shot from gun. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case Race to 20 Mile. When I went to the town of Porcupine... I found Judy Mason desperately anxious to win the big dog race to maintain the reputation of the Mason Kennels. Crooks were determined to defeat the girl, and their plot was one of the most original I've ever seen. The thrilling dog race is something I know you'll enjoy. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs> <laughs>